my dear respect sisters, my dear respect brothers in Allah, and my dear children, youth in Islam. I love to look at the audience wherever Allah allow me to visit because I want to take an imani picture of each and every one of you. So let me take a picture. To the mother first, when I see you, it reminds me of first mother of humanity. How about of the law I have? And also remind me of Sarah, Rodiyallahu Anha, the first wife of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Then, mashallah, another righteous wife, the gift that uh, the father of Egypt gave to Sarah, alayhi salam. Ah, yes, Isa was Hajra. She's the mother of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I See you I also remind me of Maryam Rodiallahu Anna, the mother of Isa alayhi salam. When I see you, remind me of Khadija Rodiallahu Anna, the mother of the believers, your mother and mine. And also remind me of my beloved mother, Khadija Rahmatullahi my own mother who gave birth to me and raised me and my ten siblings in rural Thailand. I also remind my beloved late wife, Dr. Linda Jamila Kolobotoris, to whom Allah blessed us with six sons. So I look at you, I'm taking picture. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Al Quran, for your brothers, when I look at you, remind of our first father, first prophets, Adam alayhi salam, all down to Ibrahim alayhi salam, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my father, also named Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state, أعوذ بالله السميل عليم من الشيطان الرجيم قل سيئ محمد on behalf of Allah to them يعملوا فسيئ الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون our dear brothers and sisters from Islam world organization received permission from Allah to bring me to be in front of you so this ayah says, say, Allah and His Prophet witness your word. Allah order us to work. Yeah, when you came to this hall for the love of Allah, you work, Masha Mujahada. You didn't stay home. You came. And it's my al masuliyah responsibility to take Imanic picture. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to say, Qul yamalu fa sayyadallah wa lukum wa rasuluhu wa al-mu'minun. I ask Allah to qualify me to be one of al-mu'minun. So that I can present to Allah with his rahman mercy and obey babul jannah for me to all of you so we witness each other. This is the camera of iman that I'm taking today. Secondly, I have to release my amana. I came from St. Louis, Missouri. The Muslim community is quite large, alhamdulillah, over 100,000. The masjid we, uh, we worship Allah, make ibadah, and that will feed Lillahi Ta'ala. It's a, the, the largest Islamic center. The Imam Mufti Asik, alhamdulillah, he want me to convey salam to all of you. So make sure this my amana had been alhamdulillah released from me. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Window of Iman. 
The big window of Jannah is Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We always look at this kalima as a foundation of our iman, of our life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to live this life with this kalima, to fulfill the right of this kalima. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to release our soul from the temporary short life of dunya with this kalima. <coughs> so we all say together, okay, you can say after me. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Pour your heart out sincerely. Say la ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Barakallahu fikum. Islam is so beautiful. I'm sure you agree with me. Islam is so beautiful, it takes a beautiful mind to recognize beauty. I was born and raised in Buddhist society, surrounded by those who make shirk against Allah. They worship everything except Allah. La ilaha illallah means we Islam uh, Allah there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. But my fellow citizens of Thailand, they worship everything, everything except Allah. The opposite. Then why I thank Allah so very much for his Rahman that put my ruh in the right righteous soul of my mother. Can you imagine me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts my soul in the Buddhist mind. Oh ya Allah, I could not select the human expression to say shukrullah, to thank you for guide me to be Muslim and my ten sibling in the, the dominant society of Buddhists. Thank Allah so very much. Because Islam is so beautiful. As a way of life to humanity, Islam offers the mountain of mercy as we are sitting in this conference and also along offer Islam to us by offering the ocean of forgiveness. Dr. Usman Barakul Fikum, mashallah, elaborates most of the point that I will be covering uh, supporting his statement, Barakul Fikum. The mountain of Allah mercy. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة This ayah aim with the Allahu Akbar Rahim. Allah, the most forgiving, the most merciful. Through our Al Quran, this become the twin tower, twin brothers that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala put together. Allah is Al Ghafur, the most forgiving. Allah is Al Rahim, the most merciful. That's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala forgive all sins for His slave and servant. So don't feel despair in His mercy. 
or we keep Allah hope within your heart, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, next slide is to share with you the ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to my family. Just say sort of introduction because sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu when we meet each other, we introduce ourselves. Alhamdulillah, I, as I said earlier, Allah brought me to dunya world, temporary world, full with tests and trials and tribulation in the land of Buddhist society. Alhamdulillah, I came to the United States uh, to pursue higher education. So Allah grant me all the degree from bachelor degree up to PhD. And I intend to go home, back to Thailand. SubhanAllah, Allah sent me the best, the greatest gift ever in America. Which is Zao Yati. Dr. Linda Jamila Kolokotonis. She's originally from Greece, and you can see her name is Kolobotunis. Her great-great-grandfather was the, the general, chief general of, of Greece who fought against Ottoman Empire. She, you can say that she was a lot of Muslim. But subhanAllah, Allah mercy, talk about mercy, rahmatullah, brought Dr. Jamila into the fold of Islam. She found Allah, she served Allah, she raised our sons for Allah, and she returned back to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun. So Salam Bin is our rising Muslim star. He's number five. And after over three decades, Allah allowed me to retire from uh, Madrasa Islamia, Islamic school in the United States. Alhamdulillah, I live in that much needs Islam for 45 years. The United States is very fertile soil uh, for the seed of Islam. That's why the, we must present Islam in very hostile to the peaceful Islam. We have to take Islam with love, with rahma, and with forgiveness. Audhu billahi minash shaitan rajim The greatest love. This is my faith. Of course, all 6,626 ayah is our love because every message comes from Allah. But this one really powerful. Ulaikum tu ha 
تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحبكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم When I was little boy my mother taught me how to fall in love He said, Abdullah, my Muslim name, Abdullah, I want you to fall in love. Then I fall in love with Allah ever since. He said, you have to fall in love to one who created you. And he started teaching me the Sunnah, uh, Sira of Rasulullah Sallallahu which is, that's reflected in this ayah. Say, O oh, Muhammad, to on behalf of Allah, if you love Allah, follow me, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Allah will love you. Not only that, Allah will forgive you your sin. Allah rahim. Allah is the most forgiving. Allah is the most merciful. So we have, we know how to. We all love Allah. There is no doubt. But the greatest gift is. Would Allah love us? However, Al Quran is ayah. So to Ali Imran, ayah number thirty-one. Allah said, "You you can see if you earn His love by following Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحبكم الله ويعفر لكم ذنوبكم الله غفور رحيم. That's why that as a mudir in the Islamic school, I sing to the singer. I'm not a singer, but I love to share a moment with our student. I say that Oh my Allah, I love you. Oh ya Allah, please love me too. We all want to love us, okay? Subhanallah. This life, life is a long journey full with test, try, and tribulation. We came from Allah. We are here for Allah. All question mark. We are. We will return to Allah, and we are on our special journey together until we meet Allah, our Creator. Who can guess what the question mark represents in the next clip? We are. In, we came from Allah, from the mother womb, and we approach dunya, very temporary life. Rasulullah so, Allah allow you to. Remain in this dunya only sixty-three years. Now in dunya, are we? Wallahi, for the sake of Allah, or for Shaitan. A challenge for us because Shaitan is the enemy of the children of Adam from day one. We thought that we may have enemy here, then our neighbor give us hard time. That's not our true enemy. Iblis, the father of Shaitan Shayati, want to make sure that all of human history work against the children of Adam. That's why Shaitan is a permanent enemy. As much as you have iman, strong iman in Allah, Shaitan did give up who sit in your heart to find the right moment to make your you sleep. Like a doctor Ismail said, human beings sleep, and Shaitan make sure that we sleep. The one who murdered our son Salawi, he sleep. He told. He apologized.
In the many years we've covered murder cases and sentences, today's was unlike just about any we've ever showed you before. In a Fayette County courtroom, a man confronted his son's killer, but his message is not what you may expect. LAX 18's Lindsay Piercy has more about the powerful day in court in The Big Story at 5. An emotional courtroom as the victim's father took the stand, his impact statement offering a lesson in forgiveness. I blame the devil, the devil, who misguiding you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. No, I don't blame you. I'm not angry at you at all. Robert was sentenced to 31 years for his role in the killing of Salahuddin Jitmood. Officials say Ralford came up with a plan to rob the pizza delivery driver. Jitmood was stabbed to death at an apartment on Trent Circle in April of 2015. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother on the act of involving to kill him. The judge, also overcome with emotion, called for a recess, only to return to another heartfelt statement, this time from the suspect himself. This doesn't matter. What I thank you for your forgiveness. There was only uncontrollable sobbing as Ralford and Jitmood's father embraced one another, proving that sometimes kindness does prevail. Covering the news in Lexington, Lindsay Piercy. LEX 18 News. Alhamdulillah. This week will be the three years anniversary of our nearest Salahuddin return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very fashion way, Alhamdulillah. He was delivering, delivering the pizza on the rainy night of the first day of Rajab. Talk about Rajab, let's go and make one, inshallah. Allahumma. Barik lana fi rajab wa sha'bah wa balikna Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'bah wa balikna Ramadan. Amin ya Allah. Ya Rabbikam. Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Alhamdulillah. He was delivering the pizza, and then um, the gentleman kind of planned to rob him, and he did. So he was murdered on the spot. We found out later that Alhamdulillah, he applied Sunnah, that he didn't know that he applied Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu I know so many youth here, subhanAllah. His knife was so sharp. Yahsan. He just quickly and uh, along the the doctor who examined his body told me in tears that Dr. Chibur, your son got killed but very quick less pain. That's comfort me. We met him on our way for the Nazar, subhanAllah. So, so alhamdulillah, so many fashion ways, the reason because when we learn about his departure, we live in a different city, 400 miles away. So we went to, I got a call, 3.30 in the morning before Fajr, that without warning, it said that Salahuddin is there, but no So I went kind of pace around the room, pinching myself with eyes still dreaming or real. So I went got really pain. Oh, it's real. In Allah, you were in Allah, you were in Allah, And then the, I realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Salah, gave us Salahuddin to enjoy the Niyama for 22 years. And then now it's time for Allah to call him back. We found out also on the witness of the Muslim family who live at the place of Saudi got killed. Um, they saw Saudi fall back on the wall and he has the finger of Shahada. There's another comfort that uh, we receive, alhamdulillah. Then we, and the, the wife of the brother, who saw the Shahana, finger of Salahuddin. Uh, she 
it doesn't really like so the, the water was kind of the blood was flowing in in front of the door she's a very 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 clean and she smells some very nice smell that's comfort another one the big comfort also when we perform janaza and hundred if not thousand hundred of people came to offer the last movement of Salahuddin in India have to make Salat in cemetery because masjid not big enough. Live in Indonesia for 45 years, I you know, carry the Majid Janaza hundreds of times, but come to my own son, I could not catch because uh, it, it flew so fast. Kodimuni, Kodimuni. Rasulullah said, when the righteous soul passed away, he or she saw something waiting, kai, very good. So I ran after the, co uh, the coffee, went to the left side, it went, so I ran to, to catch him on the right, on the right, the other side, it went away. So they put him down next to the to the to the grave. They said open his face for the children. So they opened his face. How long? Keep on going. So how long of my delight? I saw at twenty two years of age. Uh, he has a very dark mark of suju on his forehead. I mixed a lot for over 60 years. <coughs> his mother, Dr. Jamila, and Saladin, the honor of Allah, they both has dark spot. You know, Muhammad Rasulullah, Walla Dina Mahu, Ashida, Walla Kufar, Ruhamau, Bainahum, Tarahum, Rukan, Sujadaya, the woman of Allah, who gave Buana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that there you find the mark of Siju on the forehead. On top of that, mashallah, when I saw brother's beautiful beard, he has a full beard on his face because he refused to shave. He got another job that the supervisor really want to promote you. He was so happy. He said, oh, I need money for my college. But one condition, sir, of the one other thing that he is really proud of his name. People want to call him Sal, in short. He said, My name is Salahuddin Ayub. Okay, so the, the one condition, what's that? Uh, you have to shave your beard. And then he said, Thank you, I want to keep on stacking the box. That's a very good side for me to see him depart from Dunya, graduate. I call him graduate from University of Dunya. The other thing is that our family is very big thing about river. My wife and I, Alhamdulillah, Allah keep us Taufiq wa Hidayah, we are involved in river. So Salahuddin graduate from high school, one university offered him the, the, the major that he learned to study. But the, the scholar would be called the expensive program, they offer you half of the tuition. The other half is from the, from the parents have to pay all, pay the, we call student loan, which involves a river. So in the financial office, I said, oh yeah, so I you know that, right? Our family knew and work in river. But I don't think you want us to start with you because you don't want us to make war against Allah and His Messenger. SubhanAllah, he looked down, he is very um, disappointed, but he is very good son. He said, it's okay, Baba. I, I will trust, I trust Allah that Allah will guide me to do something that uh, halal. SubhanAllah, can you imagine? Because after that, not very long he passed away. I would be terrified if he died in river. Think about it. 
No one can make war against all you. You can, but who can you be? And the house that we live, taking care of the house that we bought with our river, in Indonesia we call La Riva program. SubhanAllah, until today, we have the family from Muhajirun from Syria stay in that house. Very wonderful son, soft, very shy. If you look at Anisa like you, he would look down. If he obey Allah in a certain, uh, certain noor, you know, lower your case, mashallah. This one, I want to share with you Al Ghafoor, that uh, our dear speaker, Dr. Usman mentioned already. Look at Shaitan made dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By your glory, O oh Lord, I will misguide your slave as long as their soul are in their body. Look at how Allah responds, mashallah. By my glory and majesty, I will continue to forgive them as long as they ask my forgiveness. So we have to make a lot of forgiveness. When I found the situation facing in the Ummah of Rasulullah nowadays, when I came to school standing in front of the student morning assembly and teachers and the parents, hundreds of them I said, Oh my children, my sister and brother, make a lot of istighfar. We don't make enough istighfar to send up to Allah. Every Ambiya remind and taught the Ummah to make a lot of istighfar. We run up the dunya. Dunya is covered by shayatin, made beautiful dunya for us. That's why yesterday I asked us when you love dunya, put in the hand. Because when we slip away, we cry another one. But when you love Islam, love Allah, and love Iman, put in the heart, so it remains tight with you. That's why Shaitan will sit in the heart next to your Iman, because you sleep. Until the last moment, the Ruah come out from the throat, and you have Tawfiq from Allah, say, La ilaha illallah, Shaitan said, I give up, I lost. Right now, we have a challenge. Not the enemy from the neighbors or anyone that looked down upon the deen of Allah. Don't worry about the deen of Islam. Allah protect. But are we living up to the expectation of Allah or not? <coughs> we must see that Islam is the most beautiful deen way of life. And we absorb. We don't compromise. That's what I told the student yesterday. Don't say it's just sunnah. No. Fattabiuni. In everything, Rasulullah breathe. Walk and talk and eat and sleep and jihad battlefield. That's all his sunnah. So, if you prioritize the greatness of Allah and His deed and His Prophet, Allah will prioritize, put us in His priority. Believe me, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves us so much. Then somehow, the sunnah of Allah, the more he loves, the more he tests. You know who the God tests the most? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the best of human beings in the world of this earth. And there will be some story in the inshallah, in the following slide. Abu Billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said forgive the people Al-Ladheena yunfikuna fi al-Sarrahi Wal-Darrahi Wal-Kadhin al-Waid Wal-Abhinin al-Nas Wallahu yuhibbu al-Mursineen Believers are those who spend in charity during peace and hardship and who refrain their anger. 
and give and forgive the people. For Allah love the one who do good. Alhamdulillah, announcement has been made a little earlier that we need to give. I was so very impressed with the Islam who I didn't know before until got contact when I came, mashallah, on Friday. Very impressed with the professionalism. Allah put the, the, the giving of sadaqah in, in the same ayah about forgiveness. See, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you, give and then forgive. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will consider that a good do. So alhamdulillah. This very good, of course, every ayah is so powerful and so beautiful. Let them forgive and overlook. Would you not love for Allah to forgive you? Do you like Allah to forgive you? Yes. That's why people ask me, uh, Munir, why you forgive that man that killed your son? My response is that because I need forgiveness from Allah so much. I want to earn His forgiveness. Not just His love, but His forgiveness. In order to earn that, I said, did you ever listen to this short of Noor, Ayah 22? When Allah said, if you want Allah to forgive you, you forgive others. So that's why I forgive. Not because I want to be famous. Subhanallah. The day that we journey to the call, our intention is subhanahu purely uh, to fulfill the haq of Allah, hukukullah, and then hukukul ibad. Because they told me that don't, we don't even allow to take picture. And when you testify, I don't look at the defendant. You just look at the judge and the audience. That day I broke every protocol of the U.S. court. Because of the Rahman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't realize that you live in the United Kingdom to see me on video. Our intention is not that. But subhanAllah, we told our son that we go there we, because it's like for once in a lifetime that we have to stand in the, uh, in the court case, courtroom, make sure that the right of Allah will fulfill. Deliver the message to the judge, to the lawyers, and to the audience there, and his, and the, on the other side of the, his parents and relatives, a lot of them, mashallah, they came to support him, even though he's first degree murder of our son. So we went and delivered the best we could, and we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our statement. And for the Huku Kuliba, we want to make sure that Salah will be right being met, being voted because he's his life will taken unjustly. And for the judge, she had to make a very tough decision. So, then for the man who keeps the he has the right to. That's why you can see that I didn't scream and yell at him because I spoke to him like I spoke to the student for three decades. I look at him in one of my high school students. He said, my son and my nephew. I said, ask him his touch, trust with him. And you can see him cry. When I, that, when I saw him cry, Allah put my heart even, even moister and softer. Because he looked around his parents. Look, because he had nothing else. When I saw that, I stood up. I walked to him. That's not allowed in the court of this. I walked to him and he walked toward me. Nobody stopped us. I thought that the judge gonna stop me. His defense lawyers, two of them, stopped me. Nobody stopped. Everyone crying at that moment already. So I walked to him. I offered him some of the tissue. And then, subhanAllah, when he extended his hand, Allah knows. We just have each other. 
like a father and son. Then people ask me, Mudi, what is in your tissue? Kind of, kind of. I said, what are your hand is? What is inside the tissue? They said, the tissue is, I feel sorry for him. I feel so much caring for him. I love him, one of my son and my nephew. I feel sympathetic of what he has gone through and how Shaitan let him. This is his word from Dr. Islam. He told me I sleep. Because they allow, subhanAllah, never happened in the history of the U.S. court. Because at the end, after the judge dismissed the court, she allowed me to speak to him in the private room. So I went. When I looked down, because then I pulled the chair for him, I said, my nephew, you sit here. So I sit down. I looked down, I found that, you know, big chains around these angles. Then I said, oh, my nephew, I wish I could take the chains from your angles. His light was sparkling in his eyes. When I look up, I found him smile. I said, you know, my nephew, I wish, because the judge already declared sentence. From this sentence, we become 31 years. So I said, I wish I can reduce or even take all of that from you, but I have to respect the court of law. So you have to stay there for 31 years. But you know, as you know that your chapter of life, last chapter, has been closed and sealed. I want you to know that I forgive you, as I said on, on my stand. Now what you should do, I want you to see, I use the three, three words, Allah Almighty God. Because I want to start with Allah first. You have to seek out to Allah Almighty God. He is my Lord and He is your Lord. You may not realize He is your Lord and who the love forgiving. That's why He died me to forgive you. Reach out to Him and I said, make sure you bow down to Him. Beg Him to forgive you. And your new chapter of life will be brighter than ever before. I wish I can stay long enough in this world to welcome you out from the prison. You know, 31 years, you think I stay there long no, 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 Probably not. SubhanAllah. He was so happy. Then I made your night and I pulled him out. He's taller than you, my nephew, tall. You play basketball. Then I, I asked him, I, I, I asked him to raise hand. SubhanAllah. We Islamize with him, whether he like, you know, or not, so he is saying. So I say to oh Allah, Lord Almighty, please protect my nephew. I don't want to mention his name, but I want to pray, uh, reserve his hug. I don't want to gossip about him. Just mention the story so we can learn. Oh Allah, God Almighty, please protect him from harm. You know, in the prison is very dangerous. Please protect him from harm and guide him to the path that pleasing to you. I didn't say path Islam, but that's what it is. And the lie that is uh, guide him to, to Islam, but guide to the path that pleasing to you. I pretty much use the same dua that we, the, the day that my wife accepts Islam, because she's very devout Christian, but she thinks that Islam is the best for her. I told her that yesterday, she kneeled down and she said, Oh Lord, I have been worshipping you. I come to my parents and my church, taught me. Now I really beg for you to guide me to worship you the way you want me to worship you. SubhanAllah, the light, the hidayah, came into her mind. And then she accepted Shahada that night, the 19th of Ramadan, Hijri uh, 1400. 100. So, this powerful beauty of Islam that forgiveness is part of its beauty. The enemy that we saw, we thought that uh, he gonna come and arrogant. He came in the last. My son and I look at him. We found him like a, a very remorseful. SubhanAllah. 
and he admitted to me in person that I said, I'm sorry for that day what happened. Who are we? We are human beings, he is human being. Allah is our Lord and Allah is his Lord. Not to forgive a man who woke up. He woke up. People ask me, you think you will be Muslim? That's not my job. The job is Allah. But we have to build the bridge. And Allah will guide you to walk toward you. Not walk. That's why love and forgive is a beautiful bridge that we have let mankind walk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These ayah also reflect upon human creation mu'amala. We have to overlook each other faults. Wife, she has great quality, mashallah, deeper. The same time, she has shortcoming. Husband, Amir of the house, has so many good quality, but he also has shortcoming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, overlook the shortcoming. But the shortcoming, you look at your own shortcoming so you can improve. But maximize the good quality of your wife. Maximize the good quality of your husband. And emphasize it. Tell him that I love you. I wish I can shall make wonderful food for you. Tell her that I love you. She may not make a good food today, little burn, but praise her anywhere. Because, mashallah, you must be cooking biryani from your iman. <laughs> <laughs> That's why so strong iman is make little dark. Yeah. Subhanallah, let's overlook it. The children are children. They make mistake, overlook their mistake. Gently remind them. Put love in their hearts by your Cairo. Our mother Khadija wrote um, Rahmatullah, she raised us 11 now in the farm of this society. She knew a year as one. I said, Mother, you graduated from PhD, in my uh, opinion. She knew I've gone to school, but she taught Quran as we in the Buddhist society. She taught she our Quranic teacher. And she knew her Spanish. She would say, oh my dear son, oh my dear daughter, why did you do that? Do this, okay? This is Allah love. She referred to Allah. And she is what Rasulullah Islam used to do, because Rasulullah Islam know how to please Allah. Because our life in dunya is to earn the pleasure of Allah. That's why she said, I want you to fall in love with Allah. Talk about merciful and love. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, give the twin tower, be merciful to those, to others, and you will receive mercy. If you want to earn Allah's mercy, be merciful to your father, your mother, your wife, your husband, your classmates, your teachers. Forgive others, Allah will forgive you, subhanAllah. That's why we forgive you. Because we want to Allah to, give, to forgive us. Alhamdulillah. Life is a long journey. Who got taste the most? Life is a taste from Allah. Life is a long journey. It is full with test, try, and tribulations. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Prophet was asked who suffered the most. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the prophets of Allah, the righteous people, then the next best and the next best. A man will suffer according to his level of Iman. If his Iman is solid and strong, he will suffer no more. You see how um, Dr. Uthman portrayed beautifully about you, uh, Yunus alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam, mashallah, admit the mistake. And then Allah will forgive. But if his faith is shaky, he will suffer this. The believer will keep on suffering until he walks on earth with no sin. 
Subhanallah. We all need that. How many of you need that we walk on earth before the ruh, the soul come out? No sin. A single drop of sin in ourselves will not enter Jannah until Allah forgive. And Allah place mercy upon us. This is another wonderful hadith. The great quality of a believer, gratitude and patience. How wonderful is the case of a believer that is good for him in whatever happened to him. Number one, if he receives some bounty, he is grateful, shukurullah, and he is bound, this bring bounty, bring good to him. Number two, if some adversity befall him, he is patient, and he is at this affection, uh, affliction to bring good to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you are thankful and graceful to Allah, Allah will give you more bless us, give more blessing. That's why Rasul Islam exercise at most when he made Salat at night tahajjud until Aisha radiallahu anha feel the pain, the crack as his feet. Oh Ya Rasulullah, Allah forgive you last sin, future sin, or any sin. Why you have to, you know, exert yourself? Oh Ya Aisha, look at how Allah knows it, forgive me my sin, and I not be thankful slave to Allah. So be thankful to Allah. Every ni'mah that we receive, the great ni'mah is ni'matul Islam. Alhamdulillah ala ni'matul Islam. Alhamdulillah. I'm sure that little one love to listen to the story. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa subhanallah suffered so much at the time of Ta'if. You know, after three years of confinement in the um, by the Makkah Mushrikeen, three years of exile. His beloved, his beloved uncle passed away after three years, and then his wife, very sad, the year of sorrow. But he he still realized his duty. The Makkah Mushrikeen had free hand to harm him, so he journeyed to the city of Taif. He thought that he could invite him to Islam. His purpose is to bring the message of Islam to humanity. But subhanAllah, instead they suffer him. Even the children throw the stone at him, blood from his to toes, so exhausted time. He and his um, servant, Walk out from the thai, sit down, subhanallah, at least one person accept Islam. Alhamdulillah, yeah. in the case of Salahuddin, we have one gentleman uh, who lived in Sun Lake City the day after the court, and he saw, he, was, he wrote to me a little bit. He said that I was confused with my religion. So when I turned TV on, and I saw you reading very open. So I went ahead and I used the word, he said, I make shahada. SubhanAllah, he did at least one that we know. So Rasulullah Islam was so tired, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw every episode of Rasulullah Islam. Malaika came down, oh yeah, Muhammad, along with the the Malaika of mountain. Allah knows. And then they told Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, give you one to punish the people of Taif or the Malaika of mountain. He will crash one time and collapse. Subhanallah. Look at Rasulullah have been saying, Mawma arsana da illa rahmatan lil alameen. He said no, don't do that. Because they didn't know. 
That's why Alhamdulillah we continue to give excuse to the people in the United States because we are living in a very tough time. We say because they don't know. But we have to do our job. SubhanAllah, Rasulullah Islam forgive the whole town. You know what happened? The, the beauty of Islam that he displayed eight years later, the whole city except Islam. The whole city of Thai, right? Okay. The next one is SubhanAllah. Rasulullah Islam has us so much, not just being Sahabi, but he is raised and born and raised together. So at the, at the battle of Uhud, Wahshi uh, made a shaheed out of uh, Hamza. Rasulullah Islam feels so bad. Even though later on, Rasulullah Islam and Wahshi came to, uh, to make Shahada, Rasulullah did make Shahada. <coughs> But he could not look at Wahshi in the face because it reminded him of his uncle. But he forgave, mashallah. There was a man who brought the, the, his cousin got killed by that man. So he walked for the hand of the man who killed his nephew, uh, his cousin. Usa, Ya Rasulullah, I punished this man. He killed my cousin. Rasulullah so said, forgive him. And then he refused. Then Rasulullah said, why don't you take blood money? And he refused. The third time he said, go ahead, kill him. And you will be just like him. Then he forgave. SubhanAllah. Forgiveness is powerful. That's why it's part of the beauty of Islam. Next one is also beautiful. This is a very famous story of forgiveness. I choose to forgive. In our family life in the 21st century, we choose to forgive. In Islamic Sharia, there are three options. Life for life, we can just let the state of Kentucky uh, implement the law, okay, and then the electric chair. Number two, uh, go for the blood money. Between two families, we can negotiate how much because you kill our son. But alhamdulillah, we choose the last one to forgive because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you save one life, you will save the life of the whole humanity. If you kill one life, you kill the whole humanity. So we surrounded already God and we saw him journey back to Allah, is very beautiful. So Alhamdulillah, why we spare his life so that he has a second chance to know Allah. The goal is to find him to know Allah. And for him, give him the chance to Allah to offer Hidayah to him. And we pray that Allah gave him Hidayah so that he can go to Jannah with Salahuddin. We know Alhamdulillah, Allah mercy that Salahuddin is a good place along with his mother. So what we love for Salahuddin, we should love for his killer too. Because he had, he deserved to have Jannah in the year after Bumfiya Khalidun for ever. This is the beauty of Islam. This story you will learn this from early childhood. You know, every day, uh, for three days, Rasulullah Islam was sitting with the rabbi Sahara, and he said, there will be a man of Jannah walking through. Sure enough, a man walking, this is the man of Jannah. The next day, the Rasulullah Islam said, there will be the man of Jannah walking through. So when they saw the same man yesterday, or the man of Jannah. So the third day, the same thing, the man walking, the man of Jannah. Abdullah Amr al out want to find out what was the special quality of the man. That was why some said, a man of Jannah. So he asked the man if he could stay over in his house for three days. The man allowed him to stay. Abdullah radiallahu anhu noticed that the man didn't do anything special. 
He didn't make salat or tahajjud all night or he made fast during the day or anything really special. He just made normal obligation for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very ordinary man. So, and he did fast all the time. He slept some of the night and prayed some of the night and so on and so forth. So after the three days, Abdullah told him the real reason why he requested to stay with him. And he asked him what is, what was, that could be the reason why he was the people of Jannah at the Swiss Islam said to the Sahab. Like uh, the story of Bilal Suhanam. I really want to support the statement that uh, the Uthman mentioned to us that we need to make uh, Salatul uh, after Salat after Guru because Subhanahu was so beneficial within a couple of two, one or two minutes. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will bless us. Inshallah, we're going to have time for you to ask some question or give some comment. The man could not think of anything, but after a bit, he said, Every night before I go to sleep, I forgive whoever has wronged me. I remove any bad feelings toward anyone from my heart. So his mind becomes, that's why we always make dua to purify Allah, purify our heart. Allahumma yasik umurana, Allahumma tawhid kulubana, Allahumma tawhid kulubana, Allahumma tawhid kulubana. Oh Allah, purify our heart, make our heart so clean, so that our heart can be the Fertile soil for hidayah, for iman, taqwa. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The ingredients that lead us to forgive is sabr. Fasbi ala ma asaba. It took us two years and seven months to, to stand in court, but we already prepared. I was five sons or all prepared that the first they were very angry. But we have to bring our son to our intention to forgive. We have to work with them somehow and they love their brothers. I told yesterday that you know we have six sons, we thought that they're gonna terrorize the house. Our son never form each other. Then they play rough, you know, went to the backyard and put the leaf over one another and go over the each other back, but they would never fall. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for my dear wife, Dr. Jamila. So, so but, uh, sabar is so important uh, in Islam to lead into uh, the forgiveness. First, be Allah ma'asabar and be patient over what befall you. You can take this and uh, next one home, inshallah. Open your heart to forgive others. Open your heart to forgive others, and the one who created your heart will forgive you. This is the beauty of Islam. Alhamdulillah. The power of forgiveness is the beauty of Islam. Islam is so beautiful that forgiveness is part of a beauty. That is because Allah is the most forgiving and He loves Forgiveness. You know the dua for like that. Like that. Whoever want to be forgiven by Allah must forgive others. Whoever want to be forgiven by Allah must forgive others. Alhamdulillah. I want to sing the song of Allah Salaam. It is not a song in the shade poem for my beloved son. After we bury him in Mexican Kentucky, we drove back another seven hours. So I start drag this nasheed for him. The nasheed that I've been teaching the son about Ramadan. Okay. Because we, we teach the son to fall in love with Ramadan. When Ramadan come, you welcome Ramadan. When Ramadan leave, you fail with Ramadan. But expecting that Ramadan will come back next year. So Dr. Jamila and Salamuddin is my Ramadan. The difference is that 
Dr. Jamila and Saladin will not return. But Ramadan, inshallah, will come back every year. You know, inshallah, is coming in the May the 17th or 16th uh, next month, inshallah. So we go like this. Ilan la ahlan wa sallan ya Ramadan. Welcome Ramadan, right? Ramadan coming. The whole schools uh, sing this nasheed. And we have so many activities to welcome Ramadan. Sometimes we have uh, ribbon and balloon to make students get excited about it. But we don't want them to go to the grocery store and pack the car with the food. Because Ramadan is supposed to be something where you have to collect a lot of food in the, in the freezer, in the jail. So we said, Ahlan wa sallan ya Ramadan Ahlan wa sallan ya Ramadan We welcome you Ramadan We welcome you Ramadan That's Ramadan we welcome. Then the end of Ramadan we say in the sheet another set of the sheet Ilan liko ya Ramadan Ilan liko ya Ramadan We say we say goodbye to Ramadan. Ilan li koya Ramadan. Ilan li koya Ramadan. We miss you so Ramadan. We miss you so Ramadan. So I want to do something for my son, which is bury him. So here we go. Salahuddin, 
Until next time, O Salahuddin. Until next time, O Salahuddin. Ilal Likoya Salahuddin. Ilal Likoya Salahuddin. I love you with all my heart forever. You are Baba. From this and the sheet that I for, uh, form for my son, uh, dear son, is a lesson that you can take home. You know, when I want to, when I miss Salamdin, I want to visit him, I have to drive 400 miles to Lexington uh, to make dua for him, say salam to him. And his mother, in St. Louis, I have to drive 15 miles to visit. On my way, I visit her to the airport. I love her so much. And thank her to Allah that Salahuddin, when Shalawin was murdered, she's already gone. Because, can you imagine, as a mother, you cannot bury your own child. It's so hard. I thank her so much to take my wife before our son. So, the message I want to share with you and go ahead to it and you will not feel regretful. Love your loved one well. I like to repeat three times because you say something, something that is very important, you will repeat three times. Love your loved one well before they are gone from you forever. Love your loved one very well. That's why we have to overlook the shortcoming of each other because Allah sent each and every one a person that Allah is a blessing or as a test. That's why it's a blessing. Thankful to Allah, Alhamdulillah, I have a righteous wife. <coughs> oh, yeah, Allah, I have a very righteous husband. Yusak Muras, Shukru Allah. But is Allah test you to a person? Be patient. Because good things can come out with patience. In the Lohama, a soul So love your loved one very well before your loved one caught forever. I cannot go see Salahuddin like, or hug Salahuddin like you can with your son and daughters and wife and husband now and here. So, inshallah, we hope and pray that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not test you as Allah tests us because, and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put. Uh, the Qadrullah in your journey of life because we are walking toward Allah in dunya until we uh, enter the Barzakh okay. but in the journey to Barzakh there will be an episode that Allah will put forth Allah put the death of my father and my wife and then my son and last week my sister but alhamdulillah, I shared with you, my sister graduated from the University of Dunya. It's a young man for me, she fast. She's a younger sister. I spent time with her before I came to attend the court case. She makes a work with my big sister, and then they make salah to she, she, she makes a work and fast, sunnah. Then she makes salah to Fajr. And her habit is that to read Quran, Mm. and make a lot of zikrullah. She makes zikrullah. And she told my sister Farila that I will rest a little bit before we go out uh, to the job. They have a bookstore. SubhanAllah, by the time my brothers came to pick them, she didn't wake up. She graduated from the uh, can you imagine if you can go back to Allah, graduate in the University of Dunya like that? SubhanAllah. That's what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good aim. Beg Allah, oh ya Allah, make my last moment the moment that I can recite La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, inshaAllah. The next one should be Alhamdulillah. Islam is so beautiful and forgiveness is part of its beauty. Sometimes we have to make the hardest choice to present the beauty Islam to the world. Rasulullah Islam is already gone. So Islam is for our, our shoulder. 
not just from the, the ulama or imam. It's all of us responsibility. I taught the student that, you know, there is ID to take you to open the door of Jannah. You have to eyes from Ibadah. Make salah, fast, oh God, this Ibadah. All of us have to do this, carry the ID. The same thing, I, Ibadah, D is Da'wah, Da'a ilallah. Wa man ashan kaulam min man da'a ilallah wa amilam sawli hawa kuala jinnani min muslimin. So all of you, Masha, sister, I will congratulate you because when you wear hijab, you are making that one. I wear like this in the United States for 34, 45 years. I, I want to be, I, I want to identify I am a Muslim. I'm very proud, Muslim, proud in such a way that worship one Allah. I told the student that I'm so proud to be Muslim not because the arrogant like a priest, but I'm proud to worship a Tawheed, uh, one Allah. I'm proud to serve humanity for the sake of Allah. Do everything for Allah, that's to take pride. Do that, inshallah, Bismillah. All right, the microphone should float around, right? Because if you have comment or anything, Barakallah, please. Anyone has any comment, inshallah? I really appreciate the Islam group for inviting me to be in front of you. It's not happened by choice, uh, by chance. Is by the ordained will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can happen without Allah's permission. We struggle to be here, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this part of His qadr Allah that I'm here with you today. Any comment or any question about Salahuddin or Inshallah? Bismillah. Anyone, Inshallah, Barakallah, make dua for me and my remaining sons and so that we can be admitted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, anyone? Because we have a last slide. You are so good audience, you know. It's very hard for me to tell the story of very sad, sad story of family life and to make you happy. People who come to attend the function, they want to be entertained. Alhamdulillah, I, I sang the song for you, it's not very good, but I sang anyway. No? No. Alright. Alhamdulillah ala ni'matul Islam. All praise and thanks are due to Allah for granting us the blessing of Islam. Islam is the greatest blessing of Allah. Alhamdulillah, I'd like to make closing to Allah. Do you have anything else? Okay. Allah um, also, remember Sheikh. Uh, Abdul Hamid, he is on his way to be with us, but he has to be called back for some emergency. So, we will bring him in his door. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar-Rahmanir rahim Maliki yawmiddin Iya kana abudu iya kana shta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lalina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-mahubi alayhim wa al-dhalim Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma yasir umurana Allahumma tahir kulubana Allahumma amin khawfana Allahumma aslih ahwalana Allahumma aslih ahwalana Allahumma aslih ahwalana Allahumma asfi marudana Allahumma asfi marudana Allahumma asfi marudana Allahumma astajab lana wa kullana wa la takun alayna wa akhtimu bil imani hayatana Allahu Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhaban nar Rabbana hablana min aswajina wa zurriyatina wa kurrata ayun wa jalna lil muttaqina imama Rabbana ghalamna hanfusana 
wa illam tamfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minan khasirin Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam tamfir lana wa tarhamna Walan walar hamna walakunna namin al khosiri. Rabbir hamhuma kama Rabbayani samiro. Rabbana ofiuni waliwali daya walilmu mini daya umaya kumul haisa. Allahumma illa nasaluka al jannatil firdaus al ala. Allahumma illa nasajiru kamin al nar. Allahumma inna ka'afun karimun Allahumma inna ka'afun tahibun lafu wa fa'afu anna Ya Karim, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim Birahmatika Ya Arhamar Rahimin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Fil alamin innaka hamidun majid Subhana rabbi wa rabbi la izzati amma yasifun والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. أنتم يا رسول الله ورحمة الله وبركاته. Please forgive me all shortcoming that I have and also please make dua for me and also insha Allah ask Allah to me to reunite us in Jannah al Kiamah in Jannah al Sunnah wa Sunnah. We pretty much know that we're not going to see each other in India because life is so short. <laughs>